MICO designs, manufactures, and sells hydraulic components and systems for heavy-duty off-road vehicles and equipment. We have been providing our customers with quality hydraulic braking technology and services for over 50 years. Welcome to the first in a series of MICO product training presentations. This presentation will attempt to give a brief history of braking and a quick overview of the MICO product line. Let's get started by taking a look back in time. At some point in time, man developed his first vehicle, and along with that, experience taught him that he needed a way to stop it. We can only speculate as to what that vehicle looked like and how they stopped it. In this example, we are showing a typical log vehicle with standard feet brakes. The identifying feature for such a system was most likely blistered feet. As time passed, man learned to tame the animals around him and use them to pull his vehicles. The new vehicles were not much faster, but they did increase man's hauling capacity, which forced him to rethink his brake system. He came up with a lever and shoe system that proved to be much easier on his feet. The identifying feature of this type system was probably blistered hands from gripping the lever and pulling back to put pressure on the wheel. Again, as man moved forward, he soon developed the automobile. As we all know, the automobile was a major development in the history of man. He now had a vehicle that moved under its own power. The first brake systems used on the automobile were a linkage type with no hydraulics. The identifying features of the system were slow and inconsistent braking, as well as having one leg much stronger than the other. Man soon put his science of hydraulics to use with the automobile. Simply stated, hydraulics deal with practical applications of liquid, such as water or oil, in motion. The result of such a science was our modern vehicle brake systems. Today's hydraulic brake systems are pretty sophisticated compared to the earliest ones, but what hydraulics did was allow for smooth and even braking at each wheel. Modern brake systems are power-assisted for low-pedal effort, which makes for a much happier operator. The basic components of a typical hydraulic brake system include a power assist or boost mechanism, a master cylinder, a combination valve, a failure warning light, and the foundation brakes, which could be drum and shoe, caliper disc, or multiple disc brakes. To help understand what these components do and how they relate to each other, let's take a closer look at how a brake system works. A brake system is initiated when the vehicle operator applies force to the brake pedal. This pedal effort is enhanced by a pneumatic or hydraulic power assist or boost mechanism attached to the master cylinder and brake pedal. The master cylinder is a mechanical device that converts the operator's pedal effort into hydraulic output brake pressure. As brake pressure develops in the system, it is monitored by the combination valve, which signals any loss of pressure through the failure warning light in the cab of the vehicle. System brake pressure applies the vehicle's foundation brakes, which decelerate and or stop the vehicle. Usually, foundation brakes will be either caliper disc brakes, drum and shoe brakes, or multiple disc brakes. It is also possible to have a combination of brake types such as caliber disc on the front wheels and drum and shoe on the back wheels. A single hydraulic brake system will have one line from the master cylinder that carries system brake pressure to both front and rear vehicle brakes. This type of system is found mostly on forklifts, off-highway equipment, and very old automobiles. The dual hydraulic brake system will have two lines from the master cylinder that carry system brake pressure. One line will supply brake pressure to the front brakes, and the other will supply brake pressure to the rear brakes. Application markets that use MICO brake products include in-plant warehouse equipment, waste and recycling vehicles, heavy construction equipment, mining equipment, forestry equipment, agriculture equipment, marine applications, and swing boom equipment. Some of the Just machines the we were talking few. about would be forklifts, scissor lifts, backhoe loaders, wheel loaders, log forwarders, log skidders, haul trucks, ag tractors, telescopic booms, motor graders, and many others. The hydraulic brake systems found on these off-road type vehicles and equipment are a little more complicated than the basic systems we looked at earlier. The principles are the same, 
but the size and intended purpose of the machine dictates that other components are necessary to produce the energy to control braking and the specified tasks. Control braking on most of these large machines cannot be accomplished using a conventional master cylinder configuration. That's when hydraulic components such as pumps, accumulators, charge valves, brake valves, actuators and cylinders are added to a brake system. The MICO product line includes non-boosted, boosted and full power hydraulic components. Non-boosted components are manually operated without the benefit of a power assist such as air, hydraulic or vacuum. MICO offers quite a selection of master cylinders and power cylinders which fall into the category of non-boosted components. MICO master cylinders are single piston, straight bore cylinders with a reservoir and return spring typical of other master cylinders on the market. Most cylinders are available in both side and flange mounted styles. They are also available with or without a residual check valve. A residual check valve is a device that allows free flow of fluid in one direction while maintaining residual pressure from the opposite direction. Myco power cylinders incorporate the advantage of a large cylinder bore for fluid volume and a small cylinder bore for high pressure. The two pistons are designed integrally within one casting. Transfer from the volume piston to the pressure piston is accomplished by means of a metered pressure relief valve. The relief valve pressure setting determines the amount of pressure that is allowed to develop in the large cylinder bore. More fluid will be displaced from the large cylinder bore into the system the higher the pressure setting. Consequently, required pedal effort also increases. Fluid displacement of MICO power cylinders vary depending on the relief valve setting and the overall system characteristics, making it impossible to chart exact displacement. Myco power cylinders are commonly used on equipment that requires larger volume and higher pressure than provided by a conventional master cylinder. Boosted components are those where the brake actuation effort is assisted by air, hydraulic or vacuum. Myco air hydraulic brake actuators take advantage of available pressurized air sources to produce high hydraulic pressures. These actuators, which are also referred to as air oil boosters, Combine a large surface area air chamber with a smaller diameter bore master cylinder. Air hydraulic actuators can be used on vehicles driven on the road as well as in many types of industrial applications such as construction, material handling, mining, forestry and agriculture. They are particularly useful in towing self-propelled hydraulically braked vehicles when the towing vehicle is equipped with air. MICO two fluid power brake valves combine a booster section with a master cylinder section in a single unit. These valves provide higher output pressure with the same pedal effort as a master cylinder through the added booster section. A booster section is a mechanical device that boosts any effort made by an operator to brake the vehicle. This is accomplished through hydraulic principles using two different sized pistons. A brake valve of this type is completely hydraulic and does not require an air or vacuum system to operate. The term two fluid comes from the ability of the booster section to use one type of fluid and the master cylinder section another. This feature enables the booster section to be powered by an existing mineral base hydraulic oil circuit while maintaining use of DOT brake fluid in the rest of the system. MICO open center power brake valves are like the two fluid valves in that they boost brake system pressure using the vehicle's existing hydraulic circuit. Although these two brake valves perform similar functions, they are two distinct designs. The open center valve is not capable of separating fluids and must use the same fluid as the vehicle's hydraulic system. It is also limited to one size of master cylinder bore diameter. Open center valves can, however, be used in either an open or closed center hydraulic circuit. Full power brake applications allow the operator to be more of a controller and less responsible for providing manual force to accomplish braking. These systems can provide significantly higher brake pressures with relatively low reactive pedal force. A full power system uses flow from a fluid source, either a hydraulic pump or hydraulic accumulator to operate the brake system and other hydraulic components. Typically, these systems operate using hydraulic oil. 
One advantage for using a full power system for brake applications is that fluid displacement is not limited by the actuating component, such as a master cylinder. These systems are capable of supplying fluid volume to service brakes ranging from very small to large. Another advantage of a full power system is that maximum brake system pressure is limited by a pre-adjusted setting. It is not possible for the operator to cause the brake system to exceed intended pressures as can happen with a master cylinder or two fluid valve. Some of the micro components used in full power systems include accumulator charging valves, modulating valves, reverse modulating valves, and relay valves. MICO has accumulator charging valves for use in single and dual brake systems as well as load sensing systems. MICO also has accumulator charging valves with a built-in relief valve to control the main hydraulic system pressure. The MICO single accumulator charging valve is designed for installation in an open center hydraulic system between the pump and its relief valve and the downstream secondary hydraulic devices. An example of this would be a power steering control valve and cylinder installed in the same hydraulic circuit. The charging valve supplies oil to an accumulator from an open center circuit on demand. It accomplishes that with a preset rate in gallons per minute at a selected pressure and is relatively constant within the preset pressure limits. The MICO dual accumulator charging valve performs essentially the same functions as the single accumulator charging valve. When it is used in a split hydraulic brake system, each individual axle is separately controlled. The dual accumulator charging valve charges both accumulators. The primary advantage of the dual charging valve is that if half of the brake system fails, the remaining half will continue to function. Micromodulating power brake valves provide directional control of brake system pressure as well as providing the operator with a pedal feel proportional to brake system pressure. These valves are considered closed centered because they block the fluid at the pressure ports while the brake pedal is in the released position. Micromodulating valves can be operated by a variety of devices including pedal, lever, treadle, cam, pilot pressure or electromechanical. MICO single modulating power brake valves are used in single brake systems. They are available in a spool design or poppet design. All spool design modulating valves are pre-adjusted at the factory using specific spool diameters, springs and shims. The spool design valve is physically smaller than the poppet design. Poppet design modulating valves use a ball and seat configuration to provide virtually zero leakage. This design also provides a greater flow capacity than the spool design. Tandem modulating power brake valves are used in split brake systems. These valves isolate front and rear brakes by providing two individual pressure outputs within a single valve. In the event of failure in either half of the brake system, the other portion of the valve will continue to function. There are also valves with a pilot apply section. The pilot apply provides an additional method for brake application through a hydraulic signal from a remote location. Reverse modulating brake valves are used to actuate spring apply hydraulic release brakes. The term reverse modulating is used because hydraulic pressure is decreased to actuate the brake from a preset pressure that keeps the brake fully released. The preset pressure is regulated to a level above the full release pressure of the brakes and must be maintained to assure that brake drag does not occur. Maximum brake torque is produced when hydraulic brake system pressure is eliminated. Brake pedal force is inversely proportional to the brake line pressure, providing the feedback for good braking control. The operation of a poppet design reverse modulating valve is much the same as the spool design models discussed in the previous slide. These models use a ball and seat configuration rather than the internal spool used by the others. Myco hydraulic relay valves are a closed center design used for modulating output pressures up to 3000 psi. These valves can be adapted into a variety of hydraulic systems. Hydraulic relay valves are used in circuits where the brake control valve is too far from the brakes to efficiently provide the required fluid volume. The relay valve along with an accumulator located in close proximity to the brakes can provide faster brake actuation. A remote operator controlled modulating valve or power cylinder 
through a small pilot line controls the relay valve. Full power brake systems must be designed to comply with current applicable standards. These standards regulate system recovery rate, number of power off stops, response time requirements, and operator warning devices. Full power systems will vary depending on the type of hydraulic circuit, closed center, open center, and load sensing. A closed center hydraulic system is typically a non-dedicated circuit. As a minimum, the closed center system will contain a hydraulic pump, a check valve, a low pressure warning switch, a modulating brake valve, and service brakes. In a circuit such as this, the pump provides fluid displacement for power on braking and the accumulators provide the energy source for power off braking. It is important in these systems that the pump can provide all volume requirements so the brakes never suffer a lack of fluid. An open center hydraulic system will contain, as a minimum, a hydraulic pump, accumulator charge valve, a relief valve positioned between the pump and accumulator charge valve, a low pressure warning switch, a modulating brake valve, and service brakes. In an open center system, the pump supplies fluid to the accumulator charging valve. The charging valve is used in conjunction with an accumulator and modulating brake valve. The charging valve controls the charging rate of the accumulator and the pressure of the fluid in the accumulator. The charging valve automatically stops charging the accumulator when the preset high pressure setting is reached. As the accumulator displaces its charged pressure when the brakes are applied, it will eventually reach the charging valve low pressure setting. At this time, the accumulator charging valve allows a small amount of fluid from the main open center hydraulic system to charge the accumulator. Depending on the requirement, the brake circuit can either be a single or a dual. A load sensing circuit is very similar to the open center circuit with respect to the required components. As with the open center brake circuit, the accumulator is the primary source for brake circuit pressure as well as power off stopping. The difference is that the pump is a load sensing pump and the accumulator charging valve is load sensing. This type of system operates as a flow and pressure on-demand system. There are certain national standards or guidelines used when developing vehicles and the work that they perform. We have listed a number of organizations that we are more familiar with. These standards will deal with a lot of different requirements such as machined parts, operational braking and safety, to name a few. Here is a typical wheel loader hydraulic system. Some of the hydraulic components that might be found in such a system are called out in this illustration. An underground mining loader could have a hydraulic system similar to this. The illustration shows some of the hydraulic components that might be in such a system. A typical haul truck hydraulic system might look very similar to this example. Some of the components that could be found in such a system are called out in this illustration. Meeting the needs of our customers is the number one goal at MICO. If you need additional information, please contact us by internet, fax, or phone. MICO is ready to serve you.